cinematic directors where like, you know, they're, they're taking cinema and, you know, getting you hard. Yeah. And making you come, actually. And that would be the hardest, <laughs> that would be the hardest, yeah. I mean, I really do, actually, I really do think about it like that. You know, as far as the audience is concerned. Like, I'm doing my own thing, but I'm thinking about the audience, too, but not in a manipulative way. I am the audience, all right? You know, it's like I'm jerking off the audience. I'm not expecting anyone to be, if, if they're sitting back watching it like this, didn't do yeah, it. Yeah, waiting for that last moment where it was yeah. a, the moment where the, you, the rear view mirror all of a sudden realizing yeah, right. this is about to, oh, 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 and then. Right. <sighs> and so when you're sitting there and you're up on there and they're watching it like that and, and they're just waiting for it to crash and waiting for it to crash. And it is like a cum shot. Okay? They're waiting for it to crash. All right. And at the, if, at the, if at the last moment they want it, they at that moment, at that moment in time, they want it to happen as much as the bad guy does. They want it. To, that's what they yeah. paid to see. And uh, and if at the last moment they like uh, they averted that's would, blue balls. Yeah, no, yeah, you know, you're right. No, that is me. No, that's me. Just director as torturer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> director as fuck with you, because <laughs> I can. <laughs> During the '80s, when I wanted to make movies, which was probably the most one of the most repressive times in Hollywood cinema, was that kind of touchstone '80s. Era, and uh, and like there would seem to be so many you know rules about films as far as like you know the heroes can't be this and they can't be that and they can't be unlikable and like everyone's you know, everyone has to be likable every for every second and you know all these kind of things. And one of my favorite like cinematic scenes of all time was uh, uh, the opening scene in Pedro Almodovar's uh, Matador of the guy jerking off to slasher films. And I was like, oh. That is touched by God genius moment. I, opening shot of a guy jerking off to slasher films. That is so cool. Um, and um, I remember like telling uh, um, uh, some of the guys at Video Archives that I worked at. I was like, man, I you know I'd love to do an opening like that in a movie sometime. That would be really cool. And then somebody goes, yeah, they wouldn't let you. And my answer to this. Every, and it, people have said little things like that all, all my life. And I'm like, who's they? I, there, I, there is nobody I've given them, I have, I have given nobody that kind of authority over me to say I can't do anything. I can do anything I want or I can achieve. It's up to me. I don't ask permission. I might ask forgiveness, but I don't ask permission. And um, there is no they, there is no they. And by saying that there's a they, you're creating a they. And the winner is Fiona Apple. Everybody out there that's watching, everybody that's watching this world, this world is both. And you shouldn't model your life. Wait a second. You shouldn't model your life about what you think that we think is cool and what we're wearing and what we're saying and everything. Go with yourself. Go with yourself. I was so miserable back then that I pretty much blocked out everything that happened back then. I know that I was real pouty, and I know that I was, <laughs> and I know that I was, and I know that I was also being yanked around everywhere, and that I had good reason to be pouty, but I just know that I was, I was so miserable. The whole reason why I wanted to, um, make an album in the first place was because I was so tired of trying to explain my personality to people. I was so uncomfortable with the social situations that I thought, I really, really thought that if I had a CD of songs, that I could just have that, put that out in the world, and then everyone would understand me, and then I would have all the friends in the world. And of course, what happened to me in my particular situation I think most people find out that what they thought, you know, they thought if they got rich or if they got famous that everything was going to be solved and it wasn't. But in my case, not only was it did I not get what I wanted, I got exactly the opposite of what I wanted to have happen. Instead of having everybody be my friend and, and, and understand me, everybody thought I was awful. The entire time that we hung out and we knew each other was during my six years off. Yeah. And you know, and and I knew I was gonna make a movie again, but 
I was in no hurry. I was yeah, really. Yeah, were you just being like you were? I was happy living life. Yeah. And I'm, you know, and in a weird way, it's funny. You're really one of the only people that I know that has done what yeah. I've done for the same reasons and what I consider the right reasons. Yeah. I got a lot of shit too, like after the last album, like from people that were close to me, like being like, you have to keep on working, you're, you're, you're being lazy, Why get, you have to get to the next thing, you're being, you're, you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're wasting what you've got, you've got this great opportunity, you've got, you know, right. and it's like, no, really, if I were to force myself to do it, then it would be crap. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that's what a lot of people are so crappy about, and, and that's why people get awful and they lose their thing. Directors don't get better as they get older, they get worse, all right, they get very out of touch, is there anybody that you can think of that's gotten better? There's a couple of people, but not many, all right? And especially if, again, again, not, I'm not trying to be crude for effect, but, you know, is, you know, this. Yeah. You know, you know, when it goes soft, it goes soft. And yeah. it looks like it. You look like you're looking at movies by guys that can't get it up anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't want to, I won't write a song unless, I, <laughs> unless it serves me in some way where I feel like I have to write the song. Mm -hmm. And you, and to you, make you, myself feel better, yeah. you know, if you're not overflowing with something, then why? Then there's nothing to give. To me, the writing the dialogue is so easy. I actually feel just a touch of a fraud taking credit for it, even though I'm protective of it. I feel like, you know, it's just like, oh, it's like some sort of God antenna. And it's like, if it's, you know, it's... Thing. And most of the time is spent with just keeping the antenna out there. That's, That's like 90% of the time. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden you go, Okay, I'm full, and you sit down, and you sit down wherever you're sitting down, and it goes Bleh. It's simple. If, if I end up writing songs that I want to re record and sing, then I'll be doing this, hopefully, and then I want to do it. But if I don't want to do it just for the sake of doing it, like I don't want to do it, and because I want to do it, I'm going to go and try to write songs. It's got to be the other way around. Like, if I write songs, then I'll be doing it. But if I don't feel like writing songs, I will not force myself to make an album, just pull one out of my ass just so that I can continue to be in the spotlight or something or to continue to, it doesn't always have to be my career. There's nothing that, there's no law that says that I have to have this as my career my whole life. Here's the thing, they can write a mean letter. They can write a mean memo, but these guys don't really have any real fight in them. If you're a real artist and you will go all the way, and if you're an artist as opposed to a careerist, and your movie is more important to you than a career in this town, they can never beat you. You have a loaded gun in your waistpants, you know, in your belt. You've got a loaded gun and it's filled with bullets and you know you've got what it takes to put it in their face and blow their heads off. You have what it takes to do that. If you know you can go there, it's about never taking the gun out. It's about never touching the gun, never raising it, never pulling the trigger, never blowing their heads off. It's about not going there. It's about not doing it, but you know you can. So if you have to flash it, it means something. <laughs> With one famous director. <laughs> yeah. The Torrentino. <laughs> Let's get a beer. Take okay. the edge off. Okay. Hey, y'all. Hey. Yeah. It's the boy band sing along, right? Oh, yeah. Excellent. I want it that way. Best, <laughs> the best song of the boy band era. <laughs> sing with me. No! Oh, don't! I, I swear to God, I don't want to know. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's right there. Laminitas. It is pop songs. Talking yeah. about heartbreak and falling in love that I listen to. They're, they're, they're taking the feeling and making it as, as broad and as simple, and they're screaming it out. And applicable and to everybody who's yeah, listening to it. Yeah, it's bright and shiny, I'm sad or I'm happy, and those yeah. are good to... You, you, when you don't have to think about it, but you can just feel it. Right. 
you know, I really, really, really honestly do not know if I will ever write a song again or if I'll... Right, yeah. Ever, yeah. If you have just made something, you should fucking feel like you've got nothing left in you. Yeah, I consider making Kill Bill like me climbing Mount Everest. That was a big mountain that I created, and I climbed it. And I taught myself how...